guys, it's Rachel here, and today I'm going to be filming for you guys a variation of Top 5 Wednesday. If you don't know what Top 5 Wednesday is, it was a group created by Lainey over at Gingerines Lainey, and I will go ahead and link her as well as the Goodreads group down below. This week's topic was your top five least favorite books in your favorite series. Now, um, when I read initially the topic, I was like, boom, easy for me. But then I got to thinking more, a bit more into it. And to be honest with you guys, I don't actually have a whole lot of favorite series. And um, most of the time in my favorite series, I don't tend to like pick apart a book that I think is lesser than the other ones. Typically, I like all of the books in the series. So this week, I decided to do like a, a variation of it and just kind of mention my top five least favorite books in a series. So it's not a uh, particular series that's like a favorite. It could be a series I really don't care for in general, but it's just my least favorite book in that series. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started. So coming in at number five, we have... Now I can't decide between Ruin and Rising and Siege and Storm in the Grisha Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. I enjoyed the first book. And I'm pretty sure I enjoyed the second book. But the third book, I just was really let down by it. Um, I just, I didn't like the ending. I didn't like who uh, Lena ended up with. Um, I just, you know, it was just kind of a meh for me. Um, mostly just because I really like the Darkling. I really like him as a character. I also really like Nikolai. I was never really a fan of Mal. I just... I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different things that made me not particularly care for the final book in the series. Um, so, because of that, I had to give it, you know, I still think about the fact that I really didn't enjoy that much. So, that's why it's number five on my list. Number four is going to be Another Day by David Levithan. This is the second book in the um, Everyday Duology. I think it's a duology or whatever it is by David Levithan. Now, as many of you guys know, Everyday by David Levithan is one of my favorite books of all time. It's, compl it's beautiful. It's breathtaking. The ending is heartbreaking. And I just, mmm, the feels. Now, when it comes to the second book, or the companion book, Another Day, Another Day follows the exact same story except told in a different character's point of view. And because of that, um, the other point of view, I just was not a fan of it. Um, mostly because, and now this may be an odd thing, mostly because... Um, just the feeling of infidelity in the second book was so much more prominent to me than in the first book. If you guys don't know what the story is about, I'm sure you do because I talk about it all the time, I'm, I'm sure. But it pretty much follows a main character named A, and A wakes up in the body of a, uh, in the in the body of someone different every single day, and it could be a male, a female, gay, straight, um, black, white. You know, it could be a, any kind of body type, and. Um, one day A wakes up in the body of a boy named Justin and A meets uh, his girlfriend, Justin's girlfriend. Now somebody pronounced, told me how to pronounce the name but I always just say Renone and so that's just how I'm going to say it but um, and he decides that he, and A decides that A wants to try to stay in the same body because he wants to be with uh, Renone. Now what was interesting about another day is Renone, it's told in Renone's point of view and how she feels about the whole thing going on and um, I just didn't like the deception in the second book. Now I'm sure that I know that the first book had deception in it but it just felt like more innocent coming from A. Um, his point of view but when you start to get into her point of view it just um it just the deception was too much for me i actually ended up feeling bad for justin um and which was odd because justin's supposed to be an antagonist in the story so because of that i think that's why it's my my let my least favorite in the duology or whatever it is right now so there's that Coming in at number three is going to be uh, The Evolution, no, The Retribution of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkins. This is the third and final book in the Mara Dyer trilogy. Now, each book, in my opinion, is a completely different book. The first book is like psychological thriller, mind fuck, like crazy. I love the first book. The second book is more like paranormal romance -y to me. And the third book is just, I don't know what the third book is. I don't know. I pre-ordered it because I kind of binge read the first two books and I really enjoyed them but when I got to the third book it just didn't seem right to me. The ending to me was a complete 
cop out and I uh, thought that it should have ended a way different way and the com there was just in my opinion too many loose endings like too many things that um, at too many loose ends um, it was pretty much like uh, the world we're just fuck the world we want to be together we I don't know it was just it, it was just a mess to me I um I don't want to give too much away because uh, spoilers obviously but it just felt like a cop out to me I didn't like the ending I didn't feel like the characters were the right characters and honestly I even think I heard that there's going to be a spin-off trilogy a spin-off told in the perspective of uh, Adam is that the main character Adam or maybe it's Noah 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 Shaw is going to be a spin-off of the Mar Dyer trilogy in Noah's perspective which I think is ridiculous but hey whatever so that's number three at number two is one that like pains me to say because this is one of my honestly one of my favorite series ever and that's going to be End of Days by Susan E.E. E. and this is the finale book in the uh, what was supposed to be a five book series which got cut into a three book series. Angel Fall and World After are two of my favorite books of all time. I loved Angel Fall so much I inhale read it and I immediately picked up World After. They're two of my favorite books ever they're so dark and um, so sexy and I um Rafi is like one of my favorite book boyfriends ever I just when I think of him I just like whoo I love Rafi the first two books super dark super gruesome super like hopeless like you feel like like the sense of hopelessness and then we get to the third book which is end of days and uh, Again, too many loose endings uh, and a cop-out ending. Um, there were, and when I say loose endings, I mean there were legitimately things that she did not close that I felt like needed to be closed. And I think it's a general consensus for most people that read the last book that there were way too many loose endings. Um, it felt very rushed. And I wonder if it was because it was cut from a five book series to a three book series. But I was so, so let down by End of Days. Especially because it was my one of my most anticipated books like of the year whenever it came out last year and I had been waiting for it and I pre-ordered it and just I was so disappointed by it so that is you know number two. And number one, which I feel should not come as any for surprise, but my least book in my least favorite book in a series up to this point is going to be Queen of Shadows, which is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss. Now, I could have gone with Era of Fire because Era of Fire was a disappointment to me, but I don't think any of them were as Era of Fire was nearly as a disappointment to me as Queen of Shadows, and that's mostly because Queen of Shadows was a completely different book from the first three books. The main character, Selena Sardathian, was not anything, or Aelin, whatever the hell her name is, Aelin was not the same person as she was in the first three books. She was a complete character change, a complete ship change, a complete everything change. Um, the characters, other characters that I really enjoyed in the previous books were like they were completely pooped on like they there were characters that were in the first th three books that I just felt did not get justice served for them they had completely different um, things go on with them and the one character I really did still enjoy was Dorian I thought his his uh, his point of view was very dark and I enjoyed dark reads but man this fourth book was a complete let, let, let down to me especially for how large the book is and um, we'll just have to see how it goes on the fifth book I'm pretty invested at this point I'm gonna continue reading them but um, because I'm so invested but I know that the fifth book is only like 350 pages which is kind of annoying because the fourth book was like 500 pages so um, we're gonna just see how this goes but the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series was by is by far my biggest disappointment in any series that I have honestly ever read. 
So there we go. Those are the top five most disappointing books or my least favorite books in a series. Um, if you want, you can let me know down below what your thoughts are on any of these books or what your least favorite books in the series are. Also, I just want to mention really quick that even though I said these were my least favorite books in the series, it does not mean that I did not like the series as a whole. Um, I read the books and I enjoyed them for the most part. This also doesn't mean anything in terms of the author. I still really respect the authors and respect their writing styles. Um, I just didn't particularly like this book in the this series and I think it's that way with everybody in books. But other than that guys, thanks so much for commenting, liking, and subscribing and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.